Ch chairman, chairman, ladies and gentlemen. Now we move to the advanced disease. I think you have to push this button. I don't know why it's on. Okay. Here we go. You know this slide, I don't have to explain it. Um, and uh, it's well known since uh, Studer, or it was Pia Bader, who published the data, could show that even patients with positive notes have a similar or almost uh, close to normal um, um, overall survival rates as with patients without any positive lymph nodes. The question is, however, what does it mean, positive lymph nodes? Why do we have so differing probabilities of P and plus patients? It could be either patient selection, and we have heard something about it just from Mark Emberton. The surgical technique of lymph node dissection is the crucial point. Definitely, and pathology also plays a significant role. So the question to all of you is, what is the difference between a five-minute lymph node dissection and a five-hour salvage-attended pelvic lymph node dissection in the same patient by the PT3A? Well, guess what the difference is. Five minutes, PN0, zero, zero out of 12. Three hours, salvage, extended pelvic lymph node dissection in the same patient, 26 out of 36 nodes are removed, um, and he was of definitely positive. So the key points of extended pelvic lymph node dissection is anatomy. And when you see the situation before you start, your pelvic lymph node dissection, this is the obturator nerve area, of course these are the vessels, and um, you start over here and all of a sudden you say everything looks fine, watch this one. And uh, this is the crucial point, so you have to identify first and have to make clear which areas you have to look for. And when you actually think that the obturator nerve or the obturator fossa is the way to go, you are wrong. You'll probably find, as you will see in a minute, 30%, maybe 25% of the positive nodes in this area. All the other nodes are somewhere else. So, for example, one thing that is not clear for most people is the Triangle of Marseille. It has been described in 19... 22, and this has never been found in any surgical textbook. This is the area, it's just behind the bifurcation of the common iliac artery, and you have to follow it up all the way to the sacrum of the obturator nerve, and then, of course, you have all the significant lymph nodes, at least from this area. So what we did in Kiel, we have a cohort of uh, 185 patients between 2004 and 2009, with intermediate or high risk who underwent uh, sentinel-based extensive pelvic lymph node dissection. We calculated the relationship between the number of dissected lymph nodes to the number of positive lymph nodes found, and we actually did a topographic anatomy uh, template of uh, lymph node metastasis. So in the intermediate risk group, there were 119 patients we found in 14% positive nodes, and in the high risk group, there were 66 patients we found 32 patients positive. The average, and this includes also the learning curve, and the learning curve is long. Uh, the average in the high-risk group of removed lymph nodes was 24, and in the intermediate risk, it was 20 to 21. And you see how many of the nodes were positive, almost around six on average in the high-risk group, and two in the intermediate group. The important thing is how many nodes do you have to remove? And I tell you just ahead of time, it's not only the number, it's also the templates you use and where you take the, the biopsies or the, the lymph nodes from. In the intermediate risk group, we figured out that it becomes significant once you remove 15 or more lymph nodes. And in the high-risk group, it was 17 before it became, became significant. So when you look at the topographic situation, as I mentioned, one-third of the lymph nodes you find in the obturator fossa. The rest, 24% on the internal iliac artery, and you have to go below the obturator nerve. Presacral, 2%, um, in the Triangle of Marseille, 2%, 21%, external, 70% in the area of the common iliac artery. That was the intermediate. This is the high-risk group, and it's interesting. I don't know why that is. It's just that uh, the, these are the results from our study. In the Internal iliac, it's 25%, and only 18% you find in the obturator nerve area, in the obturator fossa. But one-third of the positive nodes you will find, of course, in the common iliac artery, and the other figures you can see 
as well. So if you do a normal lymph node dissection, as it's described in the textbooks, and um, again, there was an interesting uh, survey at the last AUA in Washington last year, and they actually asked the robotic surgeons how many of those do pelvic lymph node dissection. Guess how many do it? 5%. 95% don't do any lymph node dissection. But this is better to do nothing instead of doing something because it's easier, at least for me, if I have a naive situation instead of something fooling around uh, and then it's difficult because we come to this point later on on salvage uh, lymph node dissection. So if you do a standard lymph node dissection, you miss 82% of the positive nodes. So what are the complication rates? The complication rates at the high-risk group, at the beginning, 20% of lymphocytes. The rest, forget about it. And in the, uh, later on, it dropped down to 17%, which is not really a good, a good move, I would say. But then, of course, we changed our concept, as you can see over here. We had a similar lymphocyte rate, of course, in the intermediate risk group, because it makes no difference if you have a high risk or an intermediate risk. It's just the procedure you do. It's the surgical procedure. And then we changed our concept, and we dropped our lymphocyte um, appearance to almost 9%, now we are at a level of 3%, and the reason for that is we do a peritoneal window into, uh, on the right and the left side, and then, of course, the whole problem is more or less solved. Mm -hmm. And that's what we do with the harmonic scalpel. So the conclusion from this study is that the maximum number of detected lymph nodes was, uh, 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 detected lymph node metastasis was achieved if you take out 17 lymph nodes in the intermediate risk, or at least 17, and 15 lymph nodes in the high-risk group. Actually, it was the other way around, but anyway, it's something around 15 to 17 lymph nodes. And the field of lymph node dissection has to be expanded. It has to include also the common iliac artery, the internal artery, the retroiliac, and also parasacral lymph nodes. And in order to achieve a good oncological result, one has to take out, I would say, around 20 lymph nodes in order to get it right. What about the recurrent free survival? of, these, uh, of the, these concepts. This was also a paper and presented at the AUA last year by an American group. They followed their patients, and these were patients, they took around 16 lymph nodes in each patient, PT1, PT2 uh, patients, uh, one positive lymph nodes, 80 patients, two positive lymph nodes, 40 patients, more than three, 30 patients. And you see the results. Biochemical recurrent free survival, if you have one or even two, it's after 10 years, 57%. Uh, the clinical recurrent free survival is 84%, which is not the same as it would be with LN0, but it's also pretty close to it. So if you have more than three nodes, and it actually more or less shows similar results as the one from Pia Bada, the results get much worse. Uh, the interesting thing, however, is if you take only those patients, we have no additional treatment besides the extensive lymph node dissection. And these were 94 of these patients. They had no LHRH, no androgen depuration therapy, and no radiation. And you see, after five years, the uh, cancer uh, recurrent free survival was 88%, biochemical free survival was 82%, after 10 years, 80 versus 60%. Fairly good results, I would say. And just that D is not the only one, um, who is uh, showing or who showed those data. This is an Italian group. They did a nice thing. Two surgeons, the one did an extended, the other one a laparoscopic pelvic lymph node dissection. Even so that the, the mean number of lymph nodes removed is not very much differing. And the positive nodes they found, you will see a difference in those who are less than 15% positive on the overall lymph nodes. So one or two. And it's less in the extensive one. And this is important to realize, because otherwise you don't understand the result. Because the one who did just a limited lymph node dissection missed a significant number of positive nodes, because five-year biochemical free survival, zero percent. He was just fooling around with some nodes, and that's it. The relevant ones, he did miss. In the, on the other hand, the first surgeon, he showed in 40% uh, biochemical free survival, Metastatic free survival, he was superior, and also in the clinical cancer-specific survival, uh, 83 or 84% versus 
eight, 53%. So in other words speaking, again, it's important where to take. So you can also calculate and say one or two lymph nodes, or you can say if I have less than 15% of overall lymph nodes taken who are positive, you are on a good side. You take out 30 lymph nodes, 15%, two of them are positive, you are fine. And another paper by Genot, similar uh, concept, of course, positive nodes where 30% uh, of, of the patients, zero lymph nodes, the 10-year estimated overall survival was 91%, with uh, one to two lymph nodes, 81%, and with three lymph nodes, it, was, it dropped dramatically to 70%, but they had a two-fold risk of cancer-specific survival in comparison to the other ones. And if you have one or two nodes, no difference. So what are the prognostic value of lymph node density? And this is from the Briganti group. I just don't want to go into detail. Again, they compared less than 15 and, or less than 15 lymph nodes versus more than 15 lymph nodes that had been also presented at the last AUA, and they gave a follow-up at the EAU. I didn't include the data because they are pretty much the same. It's just that the number of patients uh, increased always all the way up to 2,000. You see that those who had more lymph nodes removed have a better overall survival rate in comparison to those who have a limited lymph node dissection. So actually what they say, it's, uh, and they did, of course, the statistics, lymph node density represents a multivariate significant predictor of cancer-specific survival only in patients with more extensive pelvic lymph node dissection. So lymph node dissection in advanced disease, prostate cancer, should you do it, yes or no? Well, the technique is important. The number of dissected lymph nodes should be, in my opinion, at least 20 or higher. My average lymph node dissection rate is about 33 right now. It should be template oriented according to the lymph node anatomy by Studer or from our group, was one of that had been published last year. The prognosis up to two positive lymph nodes has an excellent prognosis in cancer-specific survival and even in biochemical-free survival. And uh, if it's more than three, it's significant worse. If it's less than 15%, if you like this most, or it's probably more scientific, uh, of the dissected lymph nodes which are positive in an extended uh, pelvic lymph node dissection, you can also say it has a good prognostic factor. Let's switch. Salvage, case report. This is the man born in 1941, who had a nerve-sparing radical prostatectomy without lymph node dissection in 2003. The pathology came out, PT3B, Gleason score 7, B, uh, positive margin. Initial PSA was around 13. He had underwent radical pelvic lymph node dissection due to recurrent disease in 2006 with two positive nodes out of six lymph nodes. The PSA increased to 0.9. He got androgen deprivation therapy, et cetera, et cetera. And then, of course, he developed recurrent disease again. And then I performed the extended cervical lymph node dissection on uh, December 2010 with recurrent lymph node me metastasis in one positive out of 13 at this stage. The PSA dropped. And you can see that he had a Cinerum MRI from Barnes. Uh, that's where he went to. And Barnes mentioned... Um, he has a suspicious node over here, not a suspicious node here, but a suspicious node there, and two over there. But I can tell you, MRI is good, but it doesn't tell you everything. Because particularly on the lymph nodes, out of these lymph nodes shown, we only found one that was positive. Anyway, it's a good concept, and I like it. So here you see the intraoperative situation. This is the aorta, and here you have the suspicious lymph node metastasis, and it was a metastasis, definitely, um, in this case. And uh, this is the other situation where we thought this is a positive node. It's not, but we took out all the lymph nodes that were left over so that we found actually altogether 13 additional lymph nodes. The outcome at the beginning was four weeks after surgery, 0 0.6, a drop of PSA. Afterwards, the PSA rose again. So far, he has no androgen deprivation therapy, no radiotherapy. We still wait until the PSA goes above one, probably, and then we have to do additional treatment. That does mean, if you do salvage lymph node dissection, it doesn't necessarily mean that you always cure the patient, but you probably help the patient. Now, there are some hints and uh, some, some uh, good papers, very few, which actually state that in a selected group of patients, uh, salvage radical prostatectomy and extended lymph node dissection may, may actually end up in an overall um, 
cancer-specific survival rate of 75% over 10 years in surgery. And what they did with this study, 404 patients after five years, free from biochemical-free survival, 48%, free of metastasis, 83%, free of cancer-specific deaths, 92%. After 10 years, the figures dropped a little bit, 37% had no PSA rise, 77% had no metastasis, and 83% were still alive and did not uh, due to cancer. So what did we do with our patients? We had 41 patients included who underwent salvage treatment between 2004 and 2009. They were actually put in three groups. The one group that received a combined salvage radical prostatectomy and extended sentinel lymph node, uh, pelvic lymph node dissection after prior primary radiotherapy. The second group was just extended lymph node dissection after primary radical prostatectomy. And the third group was sentinel extended pelvic lymph node dissection after primary surgery and salvage radiation therapy afterwards. The indication for salvage was uh, biochemical recurrence of the prostate cancer, shortening of the PSA doubling time, positive PET-CT, but no evidence of bone metastasis, of course. And that's where you find the lymph nodes and realize the picture. You have to come from above. I always call it death from above. So you have to go transperitoneally, you have to, may have to go all the way up to the kidneys, and then you take out all the lymph nodes. The highest number of lymph nodes I took out is 93 so far. And you take all the lymph nodes by going down and you can open. You come, when you go to the obturator nerve, you come from below. That means you come from the lateral side and go inside, otherwise you will fail. And these are the figures, so you, most of the positive nodes you find in the external area, presacral, and of course in the common as well as in the paraortic lymph nodes. The complications, I'm finished uh, pretty soon. Uh, bleeding is not a case, it's nothing very, which is really significant. Uh, lymphocele only in one patient, this is not a big deal because it's transported to nearly leave it open and you have no trouble. So the results, uh, which has been just uh, shown by Osman of this uh, EAU, after 27 months, 40% of the patients from the first group um, had no, it was no androgen deprivation therapy, were biochemical free, and uh, after 17 months, the group was, um, which had a radical prostatectomy, and then we did the extensive uh, salvage lymph node dissection, 60% um, have no biochemical recurrent free survival, and in the other group who had uh, radical prostatectomy and radiation therapy, a salvage radiation therapy, 44% after 17.6. Months. So, altogether, 19 out of 41 patients, that's 46.3%, underwent sentinel extended pelvic lymph node dissection, had a biochemical free period of 22 months. That doesn't necessarily mean that they all will not um, recurrent, will not relapse, and that's what we estimated so far from our calculation. So, we are somewhere around 40% with our group or with our various groups, and the best group, of course, is the one where you take out the prostate. After, after radiation therapy and the pelvic lymph node dissection is done at the same time. So I'm finishing the conclusion. It's possible to prolong biochemical freedom by means of sentinel extensive or even just extensive pelvic lymph node dissection. And uh, our data, we believe, provide further information for better understanding of prostate cancer progression in relation to the extensive lymph node dissection. And it can effectively supplement androgen deprivation therapy in order to prolong the time until hormone resistance, but it's demanding surgery. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much for this uh, very nice talk. Uh, is there any question? Uh, yeah. So, yeah, just, just to take out some themes there. So you're, um, you're, you're opening up the, this new paradigm of care w where we go after oligometastases. So, um, you know, a few lymph nodes, a few bony metastases, as we do in other cancers, as we do in, you know, um, colorectal and breast. Yep. And I think this is going to be a, a, a new big area of pursuit, which we, which we, need, to, we need to work out whether it actually confers any benefit. And any, any views on this? Because we're transitioning now into a new paradigm of care. Well, there are two concepts. Uh, one is the seed and soil concept for the lymph node metastasis, and the other one is the cascade uh, concept. But either one is fine and fits well because what you do is you reduce the tumor burden. And whatever kind of treatment you give in addition to that, I believe in it, and what I see from, from my patients is that they do much better. 
and uh, you, you stop, for example, you slower the PSA rise, et cetera, et cetera. I don't know if we can, if we're really with the salvage lymph node dissection, if we really can, can help some patients that we heal them, that, we, that they are free of, of cancer. If they have one or two, yes, but if it's more, I don't think so. But actually what we do is we definitely give them back a longer lifespan, and that is what I believe in. And I believe that this is the big issue for the future. This, this, is, this is easily amenable to trials. The outcomes happen quickly and are common. It would be possible to randomize now before, you know, before it yeah. diffuses um, in, a, in a relatively small trial with, with short follow-up. Yeah, of course, because it's progressive disease and should, yeah. should show up pretty soon. <laughs> Just a short question. Very interesting, I must say. I, we, we now and then do this, and what, we, what is the trouble is, of course, these chronic lymphocytes we see now and then, which could be very, very problematic. And I just wonder, you, you must have some experience. If you have a lymphocytes down in, in the pelvis, how, how do you treat it? Well, you puncture it or you do a laparoscopic procedure in order to, to make a, a window somewhere. But because when we puncture these, they usually come back. Yeah, and then you make and a window. So so Laparoscopically, you, you, or you have to open them up, depends but you, on... You always try to, to puncture them first, and, and if they relapse, you go in and do that laparoscopic... Well, the point is, it, because when you plan the surgery, we puncture it and we put in a, in a, a suprapubic catheter in this area, for example, and then you actually can give, when you have to do the surgery a couple of days later, you can give blue ink, and then you see it when you do the laparoscopic procedure because sometimes there's some scar formation and it's easier to incise into the peritoneum and then it's easy to do. Well, you can also just leave in the, the, the drainage for some time and remove it slowly and then it closes and then you don't have to do secondary surgery. <coughs> because we... No, they hardly. But, but you see the lymphocele, the, the incidence of lymphocele now dropped almost to 3%, so it's well, not a big deal any longer. A little bit less, but one thing we believe that is important for lymphocele is that you ligate more than you clip, because clips fall off, and uh, that tends to be a problem. And uh, the, the, the fossa of Marcy is a, is a good place to do, because that is where we had, especially also in bladder cancer patients, those very ugly recurrences, and that's why we have been taking out those nerve, those uh, nodes for a long time now. Uh, the number of lymph nodes you remove is another issue. I mean, that depends strongly on the pathologist, and that's uh, something one has to be very careful about because that depends presenter. And I think there are, there are other ways of controlling your quality of, of resection, such as using intracortial ranges. But the number of, of uh, lymph nodes removed is a difficult issue because very diff uh, pathologists have a different view of this. Okay. May, I, I, I want to comment it. It's very, very quick. quick. Very quick. You are absolutely right. And we have two or three patients in the salvage group where the pathologist didn't find any lymph nodes, but the PSA dropped. So he missed it. Okay, thank you. We'll move on now. If you have a question, we can direct it directly. We're, we're going to move on to the last one. So um, no matter how good we are, and Vincent...